what's going on everybody john the taurus taurus here in the city of eternal spring medellin colombia and i'm here in the neighborhood of poblado and i'm actually on my way to check out the museum of a one pablo escobar uh, the museum is located here in poblado it is about a 20 minute walk from parque lleras provincia uh, Parque Lleras and Provencia are the, are the zones where you'll find all the bars and the nightclubs, all the fun and the action. Uh, anyways, I've been wanting to check out this museum for quite some time. I haven't really had a chance to do it in the past, but I don't really have any plans to, uh, going on today. So I figured, hey, why not check it out today? Also, excuse the rough look. I haven't really been keeping up with my grooming. Uh, all the excitement here in Medellin kind of has a... a grasp and a strong hold on me so uh excuse excuse the grooming all right everybody so this is the pablo escobar museum located here in poblado uh it was once one of his many houses now a museum um this was actually uh one of his stash houses he would stash money here he would stash jewelry here all kinds of valuables and whenever he felt the need to drop by, get some money, get some jewelry, whatever, he would come by or maybe have somebody from his crew come by. So he didn't really live here all that much, but he, he would definitely keep anything that he held near and dear to him. He would keep it right here in uh, his stash house or once a stash house, now a museum. So uh, let's hop in and see what this place is all about. You forgot to invite this guy inside. Los invito. Vente para acá. Traigan su cash. Did you like the entrance? That's cool. I'm going to give you a dollar like this for your room. That's the way my mother's commander usually entered to this place. Plata or plomo, the door was opened, he put the money inside and leave immediately. Just in case he needed to escape, he was going to use two ways out. The first one, a tunnel that was connected with three different apartments 250 meters away from him. And the second way out was this, a real thing door level five that was connected with the forest or with the jungle. And this is what Pablo Escobar used to hide in here. Fifty dollar bills, one hundred bills, gold bars, jewels, art, and weapons. Your name? John. John, could you please uh, uh, go one step back, especially where he is standing, from there to the portrait, and from the floor to the ceiling, completely full of gold. Would you like to have a bunker like this, young lady? Now you have, you're going to tell your husband what would you like to have for your burial? A bunker like this for the <laughs> In the tunnel. <laughs> the doors, the, sorry, the walls. A steel, a coil of concrete, and a steel. I'm pretty familiar with that. Yes? That's also what's acting like a panic room. If Pablo Escobar was going to suffer any attack from the outside, that was the safest place to stay. Nobody said, no, nothing is going to transpire this over. At least they were using dynamite. Yeah. Yes. Pablo is covered over. And also we have a funny picture here with Pablo. Just if you decide to take it. Come here with Pablo. Pablo Escobar used to live in uh, Monaco's building. 
in Monaco's building that has been destroyed by the government, Pablo Escobar used to have a collection of cars. And this contract torpedo since 1941 was part of his collection. Part of the collection that Pablo Escobar used to have in Monaco's building was destroyed by the government. Second car. That was the first attempt of murder that was offered by the hands of the president. Imagine when the Pablo Escobar wanted to be a congressman, uh, the president decided to get rid of uh, that problem because Pablo Escobar <coughs> was considered a rock in their shoes uh, to the other politicians, right? And they decided to get rid of Pablo Escobar. They hired four hitmen and they were standing on a sidewalk waiting for Pablo Escobar to pass and get rid of Pablo in just one single shooting. Plan, 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 plan. More than 20 impacts on uh, uh, just one side of the car. Yes, and nothing happens to Pablo because something that the hitmen didn't know that Pablo Escobar was using protection in his car. That's why they decided to make the second attempt of murder, but this time they decided to go pro. More than 50 impacts all around the car. Also, tip toe, and you're going to see that I have impacts also on the road. Yeah. Yes? The massive attack was on the right side because Pablo Escobar was there next to the window and his body got uh, next to the next to him. Seated in the back, he was. Say that? He was in the back? Yes, sir, because the pilot was here in the front. Yes? 50 impacts all around the car. That is a Mercedes 500 presidential level 5. And this is a Mercedes 350 presidential level 5, but special. The difference between those cars, the impacts they received. For example, in that car, you need at least two or three impacts in the same spot for a bullet to go through. In this one, you need at least a five or six. But let me introduce this beauty. This is level seven. This car resists more or less between eight or 10 impacts in the same spot. As a matter of fact, this car is much more special than those because under the passenger seat and the, and the pilot seat, it has a plate to reduce the impact of a bomb, a grenade, or a man. Plate underneath. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. But here comes a problem. Pablo Escobar didn't even know how to drive. And he was using that Renault 4 to learn how to drive. When he was driving, he decided to participate in the Marlboro World Cup using this French car, a Cinca 1000. And he won the competition using this car. After this, he decided to go pro but he needed a faster car. And he was using this to practice. When he was ready, he decided to get a better prototype. And there were just 10 all around the world. And Pablo had one. The Porsche Carrera Turbo, 911. This is an Italian scooter, Lambretta. This is the motorcycle that the scooter that Pablo Escobar used at the beginning of his career when he was smuggling with cigarette and whiskey and he also brought a bank using this motorcycle. This is the real prototype that the new motorcycle you know right now that is called the Vespa. Have you seen the Vespa? Yeah. yeah. That was the real prototype of that Vespa. An Italian Lambretta. This is the first helicopter that Pablo Escobar had his first accident. When Pablo was right here, his two bodyguards in the front, and when he was arriving at the city, the problem at the back had a mechanical failure. The helicopter began coming down. And a lot of people watched the smoky helicopter coming down, and everybody began running after it just in case they needed some help. But Pablo Escobar and his two bodyguards misunderstood the people's intention, and they thought they were going to be caught. That's why Pablo Escobar, with his two bodyguards, grabbed as much money as they could on their arms, and they began throwing the money to the people. That was, my friends, I know that it's not too much, but who needs $700 right now? Yes. Be nice. I know that it's not too much, but $700 would be okay? Mm -hmm. Yes. Maybe you are going to get a haircut, a pedicure, yes, something like that, right? But imagine $700 in 1981. Uh, in Medellin. And here in Medellin, that we, we were completely poor. People got crazy picking up the money instead of paying attention to the smoky helicopter that could fly. When everybody was safe and sound, <coughs> uh, the helicopter made a little inclination and the main propeller touched the ground and divided the helicopter in two. The name of the helicopter is the day when it was raining money here in Medellin. People 
who watch Narcos are not going to see any of these details. You were Narcos? Yeah. Narcos? Yeah. Which one? Hmm? Did you see any? Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Netflix. No, no, yeah. Please, let me suggest you a really good one today. Narcos is not going to work for anything because as are you seeing a voice to many things. Oh, you are going to tell me that you saw that car in Narcos? No, no, no. You see this story in Narcos? Let me suggest you a really good one, right? What happened when Escobar was using this pencil, this time? Cocaine compressed inside of the tires. Then, he used the ring, all of these tires were put inside a container, mm -hmm. they contained it in a cargo ship, but the cargo ship takes one week to take from here from Colombia to the United States. Mm -hmm. One week. In the meantime, Pablo Escobar was using the second technique. The Canadian Booker. The Canadian Booker is um, a plane <clears throat> to extinguish the fire in the forest. Capacity of cargo, five tons. And how long was carrying? Not water, right? <laughs> Five tons of cocaine in every plane. And Pablo Escobar used to have two of them. The first one goes in the morning and the second one in the afternoon. Ten tons in one day. Three times a week. Thirty tons of cocaine in one week. Okay, let's put it in this scenario. Do you have your cell phone on your mind, right? And yeah. your hand. Yeah. Please, could you please use your, your calculator? Of course, yeah. I'm sorry for bothering you, my friend. No problem. Could you please make it thousand, please? Yes? Yeah. Plus 30,000 with the Canadian book. 30,000. <coughs> Plus 30,000 with the tires. How much is everything? 75,000. Times? 45,000 each kilo. Oh, Talk to me. We've got net revenue weekly of 337,500,000. In a fucking week, my friend. <laughs> Imagine a month. You were completely rich in one fucking month working for Pablo. You know the money we were talking? That's the reason Pablo Escobar decided to buy 70 houses like this to hide the money. And, and that would have been in what year? 80s? 70s and 80s. 70s and 80s. So Imagine. Especially it was a lot more than from 77, from, especially, Pablo Escobar began earning mountains and more mountains of money since 1975. They are from Canada. What is your name? Sook. What is your name? Sook. Sook. Sook was Pablo Escobar's name. And he was invited several times to Hacienda Napoles. Pablo used to call him, Hey, Sue, what are you doing, my friend? Nothing. Would you like to come this weekend to Hacienda Napoles to spend yes. the weekend? Yes? My friend, what do you want me to send you to pick you up? A lager jet or the helicopter? The jet. The jet. <laughs> ah, but my friends, your friends look a little bit bored. Mm -hmm. Do you think they mind if I ask? the pilot to go to Brazil and get some bitches for your friends? <laughs> <laughs> Two lager jets, four helicopters, a runway for planes, three kilometers and a half, with gas station included. Twenty artificial lakes where Pablo Escobar usually practice whatever sports. Three Olympic poles with water and slides. Two zoos. One, a Jurassic Park for, for his son. Very real sized dinosaurs made fiberglass. And the second zoo for her daughter Manuela. 1,250 animals from all around the world. How many? 1,250 animals. Four. But nothing that I mentioned before exists because the government destroyed all this property. Looking for money and drugs. They didn't find out anything. That's why they decided to destroy all the property. And right now, Hacienda Napolis is a thematic water park. Ten big pools with water slides. This is Communion 9, Pablo Escobar's neighbor. 
This is the neighborhood that Pablo Escobar gave to all of these people that were living in these conditions. He gave them this neighborhood with a school, church, soccer field, and the first soccer field illuminated at night was given by Pablo Escobar. The project began with 500 houses. Today, 6,250 families are living there thanks to Pablo Escobar's project. We don't use or recommend tourists to go there due to an invisible barrier problem the gangs have in there. But if today you are feeling a little bit bored and you are looking for some adrenaline, please go. You are going to have fun. Continue wearing gold necklaces like this. That is the VIP tour. <laughs> Black cockatoo. They were almost extinct in the 80s and Pablo Escobar have two of them, each one of them costing one million dollars, and he had two. That's the reason they were called the, the one million dollar caca. Albinos elephant. Remember that everything that is albino is going to be a little bit more aggressive than the normal one. For example, the albino elephant is going to be a little bit more aggressive than the black one. Multicolored parrots, guacamayas, papagayos. Pablo Escobar used to have an aviary, yes, with more than 350 um, birds like this. The stupid government decided to set them free. Free. What happened with them? They didn't even know how to survive in the wild. Tell me if they are not stupid or not. In Spanish, la catedral. In English, the cathedral. Yes, Pablo Escobar person and priest. When it was confiscated in 1992, the police officers found uh, that Pablo Escobar used to have a couple of details inside of this uh, property. Take a look at the property. Pablo Escobar used to have inside soccer field, helipad, swimming pool. Have you ever seen a prison with swimming pool? Casino, bar, five-star restaurant, discotheque, <clears throat> video room, cinema room, pool table, Jacuzzis in every cell, double-sized bed, says workers every night. My friends, let me assure you, assure you something today. If that is a prison, I'm going to become a criminal tonight. <laughs> first of all, this photo. That was Carlos Escobar, first criminal record. He was cut with how many kilos? 20. Excellent, sir. He, for the first time, he was cut with 20 kilos. Coming from? Ecuador. Excellent. Ecuador. 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 Okay. Yes. Coming from Ecuador, he was cut with 20 kilos. He was sent to jail how many months? Three months. <laughs> you did your homework. <laughs> Very good. Those are the tourists <laughs> who really pay attention to the tour guide. <laughs> he was sent to jail three months. <clears throat> that was Pablo Escobar's first criminal record. Remember that Pablo Escobar uh, wanted to be a politician and he became a congressman. <clears throat> when he was a congressman, there was a senator. His name was Rodrigo Lara Bonilla. And Rodrigo didn't like Pablo Escobar. As a matter of fact, they hate each other, right? And Rodrigo found out that Pablo Escobar used to have a past. The new congress guy is a drug dealer. Pablo told immediately Rodrigo, Rodrigo, I'm going to give you one week to present the evidence that you have against me. The day before, Rodrigo presented the evidence. No. Yes, and that was Pablo Escobar's second mistake. When he killed Rodrigo, the population began pressuring the president. Mr. President, Hi. right now. <laughs> Worst job in the world. Do not worry, Mr. President, just for an example. Mr. President, now you have the evidence that this guy is a, is a drug dealer and also a murderer. What are you going to do with this guy? Talk to me, Mr. President. Wow, well, we should put him in jail, I reckon, yeah. yeah. If we don't have the chance... We should take him out, too, then. Mr. President, what are we going to do with this guy? Say that? Thank you very much, Mr. President. <laughs>
That is the president I need. <laughs> when the president gave the order to go and hound down Pablo Escobar, the war here in Colombia was unleashed. And it began in 1984. It lasted six years. Six fucking years in a war with Pablo Escobar? The population were sick and tired of having a situation with Pablo Escobar. So, they pressure the president again. Mr. President, please. That's enough. Stop this mess. We are sick and tired of this situation. Do something. And the president convinced this priest. Please, Mr. and Mr. Priest, go to Pablo Escobar house, have a conversation with Pablo, and try to convince Pablo to accept a deal with us. But the deal has conditions. Number one, stop assassinating innocent people. Two, stop killing police officers. Three, and start bombing Colombia. And four, and start kidnapping people. Pablo told the priest, it ain't gonna work like that. Please, go back um, to the president and tell the president that I'm going to turn myself in tonight if he wants to, but the only way is if he accepts my condition. And my first condition is, I am not going to a normal prison. All my, my enemies are there waiting for me to kill them. Tell the president that I'm going to be safer at La Catedral. Tell him not to worry, he's going to have control on me. But I'm going to be safer there. 